But hold on, bro. You also played tennis too, though. At six oh, foot yeah. seven. Explain that. That's a fun story. <laughs> I, so here's the thing. I tennis is a good one because this is a good one. I, I so I grew up, my dad is an intramural tennis player still to this day. He's 72 oh, wow. years old, still plays tennis. Uh he was one of those kids, you know, in high school, way undersized and did not hit his growth spurt till he got to college. So he didn't play high school sports really. Mm. And so he got to college, grew like three or four inches, became six foot three and was like you know, athletic and wanted something to do. So he picked up a tennis racket, started playing, and now he's going on 50 years of playing intramural tennis, travels all across the South and plays in, you know, different wow. men's tournaments, loves it. So I grew up around tennis, and so I would play it, um, and I loved it. And so chasing tennis balls up and down that court obviously made a huge impact on me from the ability to be able to move side to side, directionally, all that. Um, but the best part of that story is I actually played till I was about 13 years old, um, I was probably six four, six three at that okay, time, okay. you know, but still way bigger than everybody else yes, that was playing absolutely. tennis. No question. I was a big serving volley guy. That's for sure. You weren't <laughs> getting the ball over me. But I go to LSU. I'm getting ready to leave LSU my junior year there. Sit down with the sports information director. And he's like, hey, what's something cool like we could just put in your bio to kind of pump you up a little bit of other sports? You know, I was like, well, I mean, I don't know. I have a lot of stuff when I was young. I mean, I had a baseball team that was really good. We went to All-Stars one time, one, you know, went to the state championship. We didn't win. You know, in high school, I was on a really good football team. I was like, the only other cool thing I did is I did win like a tennis championship. But I clarified that I was like 12 years old when this happened. <laughs> But, of course, you go through the draft process, you come out in the league, and everything out there was that I was a junior high school, high school champion. champion. <laughs> and I've literally spent now 20 years trying to fix that narrative because I wasn't a junior high school champion. Yeah, I thought you was. But <laughs> I did play tennis, and I was pretty good until I, I gave it up. I mean, but, you know, so I tell parents right now at my academy, I think the problem with a lot of young high school kids, especially the linemen today, is they, they haven't played sports. And I, I think the ages, the most important that you play sports is that the ages of six grades, uh, 11 years old to about 14, 15, play as many sports as you can. That's about sixth grade to about 10th grade for big guys. I know in the 10th grade, things start start being specialized. And if you're not yep. good, you can't play basketball. But if you grew up playing those sports from those ages, I think it helps in your ability to move. 100%. A lot of these kids now are, are not – as great as athletes as we were because they specialize in one sport, but they do football really good. The, the elite kids do, but the overall kids, they struggle because yep. they're not wrestling. They're not playing basketball. They're not playing baseball. They're playing one sport and they're, they're doing it from the ages of five years old until all the way up. They're playing football. Yep. So their body only, only, only understands one kind of movement. I think it's hurting the younger guys. So to hear you play tennis at that age to 13, to me, that's a, that's a crucial age in your development of your of your movement. So, yeah, and, and you look at like in the South. I know, like for Louisiana, like we don't have not as many schools have wrestling like you do in the yes, North. So you yes. have all these O linemen yes. that are in the NFL and in college football were wrestlers, yes, right. you know. And yeah. and so we didn't have that. But I always say this on the flip side of that. One of the things I really says has a lot to do with my longevity and how I was able to play in the league for so long is we had powerlifting. So I mm. was the starting power forward on the basketball team in high school. And during that same time the basketball was going on, which was awful for practice, I was the heavyweight division leader in our powerlifting program. So I was back squatting with suits on and chalk and wraps and getting beat to heck and back, uh, you know, competing in these powerlifting competitions. Oh, wow. And I would go straight from those workouts to basketball practice. Legs would feel like they're 10 tons. But developing that kind of foundational strength along with the agility, I think really had a lot to do with how I moved my body later. That, that definitely, because that's, that's a big part of your game. My coaches in high school made me hate weightlifting. <laughs> to this day, I'm an anti-weightlifting guy. I got I got more of my injuries in a high school weight room yeah. than any other injury I had at any other level of football. You would love this, Willie. So my <laughs> high school strength coach, Casey Sanders, will talk about, we, we did things in, in increments of 10, 8, 6, 4, stuff like that, but the way he would actually train guys, no clipboards, no nothing. He would remember it. He'd go off memory. And he would put us in racks, and he would have all the strongest guys in the strong platform one go all the way down to platform 10. We had a huge weight room, mm. and he would give you weights. And his whole concept was, especially as a young lineman, until you could master a weight, which to him master a, mate, a weight meant complete control, not out of balance, and the bar moves at a steady movement without you losing balance and without any clinging or clanging, you could completely control the weight up and down. You'd never go up in your entire high school career. So until you learned how to master a weight movement, 
you'd never move up. And then once you won, he would move you up five pounds, 10 pounds, send you back down if you, you lost that ability. So we mm. train from a standpoint of by the time I ended high school, my ability to master lifts in a way that's controlled and wow. healthy and move mm. bars and all that uh, was insane. And then that was mixed with circuit training and everything else that we did with him. Uh, he was really, really special. And I've always thought the way he trained us uh, was really so rare. It's it And even today, I think that it's still way above a lot of programs wow. that are out there with really the, because that's the thing. I mean, there's more guys, you know, the, the statistics show it. The trainer room, all those guys would tell you, athletic trainers, more guys get injured in the weight room, in the weight room. than they get injured on the football field. <laughs> the football field, that's true. It's the truth. You end your career in Especially the weight room. high school kids. I, beating, I your joints, beating your joints up. My son's sophomore year, I saw eight kids have um, disc problems trying to squat. Oh, yeah. And I made sure he didn't squat with his high school team. No, he could not do it. 